Thousands of Irish followers who believe that she received messages from God. We joined the faithful at their conference to talk religion and also to talk about the importance of prayer in their lives. You're welcome to Nationwide and you're welcome to this international gathering of the Divine Mercy Organisation. Over the weekend, some 5,000 people, the majority of them Catholics, came here to the RDS in Dublin to pray and also to celebrate the teachings of the Polish nun, Sister Faustina, who was canonised by Pope John Paul II 15 years ago. I suppose you could call it a mini pilgrimage during the season of Lent. think about a conference, we think corporate, strategy, projections, but this Divine Mercy Conference centres on the praying of chaplet, which is a series of prayers, and it's contained in this book. It's recited on the rosary beads, and followers of this worldwide movement claim that the prayers can help the needy, sick, despairing, and the hopeless. Some people are looking for miracles. Others for answers. Other people are looking for peace in troubled families. It all started back in the 30s when a Polish nun, Sister Faustina Kowalska, claimed to have received messages from God. She kept diaries and so the Divine Mercy Movement was born. And every week in Ireland, hundreds of prayer groups meet in their parishes to pray for the intentions of their community. Mary Fanning went along to the prayer group in Moor Abbey, in Monas Brevin, in County Derry. International soprano Celine Byrne joins the Moor Abbey Divine Mercy Prayer Group in Monas Drevin and sings to an enthralled congregation who every week gather in the chapel in the grounds of the house where the famous tenor John McCormack once lived. This prayer group is typical of groups all over Ireland following the Divine Mercy Chaplet, a booklet of prayers dedicated to people's needs. They are ordinary and not so ordinary down to earth people who come together to pray earnestly for intentions in their community. Medical professional and humanitarian activist Patricia Keane founded this prayer group 10 years ago. We, we pray for the sick, we pray for, we get a lot of prayer intentions. Um, they can be prayers really for, for the sick, a lot of young children with cancer, terminally ill, young mothers, young fathers, um, people who are finding it incredibly difficult to cope with unemployment, no money, um, living on their nerves, breaking up. So they're all, that's what we really come to, to pray for. And we say the chaplet every Monday night and we say that for all those in need of God's mercy. The night starts with Mass, celebrated by Father Jim Candon. And in the congregation is the Whelan family, a young couple with small children. One of them, Connor, was very sick as a baby and prayers were asked for from the Murabi prayer group. My son Connor was sick in Crumlin um, he was after having heart surgery and a friend of my sister-in-law's was a part of the group. So when she found out about Connor, um, she approached the group to pray for him. He's had six heart surgeries, four of them were open heart. Um, so he's had quite a rocky couple of years. Um, he, his condition is heterotaxy syndrome. Um, it consists of um, his stomach and his liver are on the wrong sides and he has a lot of heart complaints. Connor is now eight and in great form. The family found the fact that he was being prayed for so earnestly during his illness a great support. It was, it was a great comfort to know that you know, so many people were praying for Connor while he was sick up there. It's great uh, to know everyone's thinking of him and saying prayers for him and thank God now with help of Cronin and all the prayers I can show everything. The prayer group is made up of young and old and they make no 
apologies for their faith in an era of social networking, instant communication and instant gratification. And the Moravi group is typical of prayer groups in towns all over Ireland. There's a great misunderstanding about what rural Ireland is. And rural Ireland is full of very devout Catholic people. People don't want to look at that anymore. They don't want to acknowledge that. But I'm in rural Ireland. I was brought up in rural Ireland. I still live in rural Ireland. And I encounter that every day of the week. And Divine Mercy groups make no exclusion based on religion when it comes to praying. There's one thing that is true in this life, is that the pain in the heart of a mother who has lost a baby, if that baby is a Jewish baby, if it's a Muslim baby, if it's a Catholic baby, a Christian baby, the, their pain is the same. They have heartbreak, they have heartache. So how can you exclude somebody when you know what that pain is? So no, we embrace everybody's pain. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. The chaplet prayers are recited on the rosary beads. That begins with the Our Father, Hail Mary and the Creed, and then you say the chaplet, and they are special prayers within that chaplet. It's still said on the rosary beads, so you work your way around the rosary beads, and it takes about three or four minutes to say it. It's one of the easier prayers to say. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us. I find it comforting to be able to pray and to be able, when I get stressed, not to be on Facebook going, I'm really stressed today, but to actually pray and release that stress, you know. Look, each to their own. Some people believe in meditation and they, they believe in Buddha and they're Buddhists and there are other people who, do, who believe in different religions. This religion has helped me a lot in my life because without Jesus in my life, I don't know where I'd be. As an onlooker, what really impresses watching this Divine Mercy group is its strength in its quietness and gentle approach. Something international world artist Celine Byrne finds comforting in her schedule. I pray all the time uh, because I'm stressed all the time. I have so much music to learn and um, in so many languages. Yes, and then I'm traveling, so I'm always praying for safe travels. And also, um, yeah, I pray before I go on stage because sometimes I get nervous and it helps me. Then sings my and requests of the community. And the mass preceding the chaplet was devoted to a young man, Fergal Lockie Ryan, who passed away last year. It's a coming together in faith, with no agenda, just to pray and to try and help people with the struggles of life. If I come here tonight with a pressure, I can go away with a pressure, but with it, with it contained, and I can, I can face tomorrow much easier than in a panic situation. So my faith is a leather. It, it, it gives me the ability to go from day to day, knowing that I haven't got the solutions. But tr I mean, the, the, the central theme of divine mercy is to trust in God. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. One of the great important things is when you have faith and belief, that you have to express that joy and peace of knowing that with God you you are at peace and you have joy in your heart and that and that God is there to fix things for us when we allow him to. Then sings my
I love the prayer group in Monas Dwevan, and it's a great treat for them to have that wonderful, wonderful soprano, Celine Byrne, singing at their weekly meeting. Now, we're back at the RDS, at the Divine Mercy Conference. It's in its 24th year, and it's run mostly by lay people. Don Devaney is the chairman. Don, you're going to have to start by explaining to me what happens here over the two days. It's a bit like an Ardesh. It is, and Ardesh is a good description of it. Over the two days, people come from all over the country, uh, from and as well from England, Scotland and Wales, and even further afield in Europe, and some come from America, that they come together, they have a common purpose of prayer. They come here for healing, they come here for peace, for consolation, they come here for community and to, to, for fellowship. And God's mercy is for everybody, and everybody needs God's mercy, so all of the people that are here they come together to pray for the country. They're praying for our young people. The faith is still alive and strong in the country. While people might go to Mass, it doesn't mean they're not praying or they don't have faith. Mm -hmm. Now, the age profile, speaking of uh, age, is older. How do you appeal to younger people and get them to come along? Okay, well, we have here at the conference, we have U2000, we Pure and Heart, we uh, Youth Network. And they're all young people who are, and there's a real active movement, young people's movement in the church. Again, that is not widely known, but young people are really, they're coming to discover and to, to know God's love in a different way through their own age group. The year 2000 has been gone since uh, the year the 2000 millennium, yes, absolutely. So it's 15 years on and it's getting stronger and stronger each year. A lot of Catholics in Ireland had their, I mean, their faith totally rocked by the horrible things that happened in the church here and also abroad. Um, how do you kind of come out from that and yes. something like this? I think the first thing to do is that as the conference here that we've addressed that issue, we've said what happened was wrong, it should never have happened, and we put our hands up and prayed for the people who were abused, and we also prayed for the abusers. And we've also dealt on this in the conference here with social issues like addiction with Sister uh, Concilio. We had uh, Peter McFerry, Father Peter McFerry talking on homelessness. We had uh, uh, John Lonergan from Mount Joy Prison speaking on the prisoner situation. So we've, over the years, we've, we've also addressed the ceasefire in 1995 and 96. And we've been praying for whatever issues are going on in the country. We've been praying for them here. What we're praying for these days is we're praying for uh, employment, that the country will come back to prosperity again and their young people will return to jobs and that to stop the immigration flow. And we're also praying for the forthcoming referendum. Don, in the day job, you're a former business executive and now a public servant. What's the appeal of Divine Mercy for you? Well, the appeal of Divine Mercy is that is healing and forgiveness. That here, the, the essence of the conference here is, and the team this year is, forgive us our trespasses from the Our Father. And the, the, what draws me and appeals to me about this is that it gives people an opportunity to come for healing and to find peace within themselves and to find God's mercy. As the conference continues, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back, I'll be talking to a young man who has dedicated most of his life to inspiring and helping others. We'll talk to you again in a couple of minutes.